Good morning, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session of Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we're about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, we are going to look at the speeches, the independent speeches that were made by Andrew Holness, that is the Prime Minister of Jamaica, that's Prime Minister Andrew Holness, and also the leader of the opposition, Mark Golding. Now, it's interesting to note that our leaders, it's standard that they make Independence Day speech every year, right, to celebrate our independence. But we need to look beyond 1962, and that they have not always done. They have always done a terrible job of looking beyond 1962, when Jamaica got its independence or gained its independence from Great Britain. We always tend to look at the history of what came before 1962 to show our tenacity and the fact that we had the wisdom and we also had the strength to stand up and to fight for independence, even though we did not really fight for independence per se. I think that our independence was given to us on a silver platter. As I've told you before, at, at least yesterday in my speech, but I've also mentioned it in previous videos that Great Britain, its empire had fallen, the sun had set on the empire of Great Britain, and they could no longer afford to keep their outposts, their colonies, including Jamaica, so they had to get rid of us. So it's not that we have fought for our independence. We have fought for certain freedoms, right? And we cannot deny that. We know that the Morad Bay... Um, revolt in 1865 and we also fought for our you know the freedom to vote all right or adult suffrage so we understand that that we have done and put up a lot of fight um the fact is sometimes i do wonder if our people are tired because they have fought too much we fought in the 1970s under the michael manley uh, government but i think after that fight after the 1970s it seems like our people have given up. I do not think or many of the people um, in which the spirit of revolt is deeply enmeshed or intertwined. I think they have left, they've migrated, they no longer desire to live in Jamaica. I think many of our people who have that audacity to stand up to the system have left the island. And so what we have there are people who are just there and they are just occupying space as it were. So Jamaica is not filled with people who are visionary, people who are highly intellectual, and people who have a passion to move the country along. What we, we have there are people who are just, you know, going with the flow, right? And they're living their lives as best as they can, right? Not looking ahead and not seeing the dangers that might impact our nation's progress. But this morning, I want to spend a little time on the speeches that were made by our leaders, by Prime Minister Andrew Honus and the leader of the opposition. Now, let's begin with Prime Minister Andrew Honus. And he started his speech with singing, right? He was singing one of the songs of independence, one of the or, or locals, you know, um, one of our local singers, one of our local musicians. And, you know, very creative, you know, to start out with that. But we are living in some very dangerous times right now. And we can't afford to joke and we can't afford to be just, you know, ordinary. You know, we need to hear something of substance. And, you know, he's properly clad, clad in his, the colors of Jamaica, black, gold, and green. And the primus is always well put together, and we have to give him credit for that. But throughout his speech, you know, he was always mentioning about climate change. And I think most of his speech was spent, you know, lecturing Jamaicans on climate change and the fact that we have been impacted by Hurricane Beryl and what we need to do. But the fact of the matter is that we have not created an economy in which we are going to be able to deal with climate change. And make no bones about it, the people who are telling you about climate change in, uh, in the United Nations and so forth, they're not going to help you. The monies that they're collecting are not going to help Jamaicans, poor stricken, poverty stricken Jamaicans. I can tell you that. All right. So if we have not created, you know, a, an economy that is sustainable, as they're suggesting, they like to use the word sustainable. And their understanding of sustainable is to make you poor, by the way. And this public-private sector partnership. You've got to be very careful of, about that. 
Because when you have these big businesses joining together with the public sector, they often dominate because they are the ones with money. And no big business, no big entrepreneur such as the Michael Chi, what's his name? Michael Lee Chin, right? He's not going to be investing billions or billions of dollars in a pro into a project that he's not going to garner lots of money. He's not going to do that. So it's not about building you, right? It's about gaining money. And oftentimes the two are not linked together in terms of the, 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 the agenda of the public sector is not linked up with the agenda of the private sector, right? The two are walking on contrary roads, on roads that are not necessarily parallel. It's something that you need to understand. So the, the, the prime minister here, he's talking about, he spoke about climate change and the fact that, yes, it's going to impact us. He also went on to talk about wars and the fact that the war in the between Ukraine and Russia is, is also affecting our economy. He spoke about COVID-19 and he spoke about the financial meltdown in 2008, you know, uh, but there is not any sense of hope that he is imbibing in the Jamaican people in terms of where are we going and how are we going to improve on our finances. Let me have you listen to some of what he is suggesting here. Impacted our growth and employment and increased our debt. It took us 10 years to recover our GDP to 2009 levels. 2020. Jamaica was impacted by a global pandemic, which derailed our growth and employment and increased our debt. Within two years, Jamaica had recovered its growth and employment and was back on track with reducing its debt. This is not by accident. This is by the deliberate design and the hard work of my administration to build resilience in the Jamaican government by restructuring our financial, economic, security, and civil preparedness affairs to be able to withstand shocks, recover faster, and rebuild stronger from crises. So he is just lying that, you know, whatever progress he has made um, in terms of putting the Jamaican economy back on, you know, back into shape, it's only been done, has been done by his government, that previous government did, didn't do anything. When we know that according to their neoliberal agenda and their neoliberal explanation that the IMF, you know, that agreement was inked out under the PNP administration, right? And he just continued with these neoliberal, um, you know, um, policies. So it's not that everything was done by Andrew Honus and his government. He has to understand that previous government also participated and they did something, but this is what our governments do, right? That's what they do. We have built a new system of government that is more robust, self-reliant, and strategic. In fact, that is what it means to be independent. The ability to withstand shocks, deal with crises without having to rely or be dependent on the resources of others or be indebted to others. At 62, Jamaica must be able to stand on its own two feet and face the challenges and uncertainties of this era of globalized world affairs and changing climate. Yeah, but how are we, again, climate change is in the agenda, right? And look at his eyes because he's just telling us what his masters, sitting in, in his seat of slavery, He's telling us what his financial masters has sent him to tell us. But he's not intimating, right? He's not intimating, rather, um, the fact that most of our assets have been sold out. And that if most of our assets, assets have been sold out to foreign investors, then how can we be free, right? If we don't have access to our beaches, right? Most of our utility companies have been sold out. How are we free, Mr. Prime Minister? And how can we rebuy, regain those assets that we have sold to foreign entities and firms? Hmm? So I'm not sure what this independence is all about in this globalized world. And they like to use this globalized world where you have 
the survival where it is really, I should say, the survival of the fittest. So those with who have a lot of money, they come and they buy you out and you are going to be left weak and you will not be able to survive as you would like to do. So the prime minister is not saying how he is going to achieve that. He's just using words so that he can sound like a prime minister, right? That's what he's doing. He's not really saying much at all. Some Jamaicans may not see this as important or make the connection between global crises and the local challenges of their daily lives, such as domestic water supply, garbage collection, condition of roads, public transportation, health care, and affordable and healthy food. The truth is that in the past, we would have diverted resources and borrowed resources to deal with the impact of external shocks, whether economic shocks, political shocks, or weather-related shocks. We had no reserves, and no fiscal budgets. This meant that unplanned external shocks and crises disrupted planned capital expenditure in public goods, such as roads in your town, water to your home, solid waste collection in your community, and facilities in healthcare. Take a Before bed tonight, try this seven yeah. second brain trick to help. So th this, is just, this is just mere words, right? And he's saying nothing, right? He's not saying a thing. This is what the IMF would have said. And he's just simply telling us what they would have said to us. And but it really means nothing because Andrew Holness cannot build Jamaica or his government single handedly. It takes the efforts of all Jamaicans to understand that we have been lied to, right? By successive administrations, that they have been lying to us and that they have been just telling us what their financial, you know, oligarchs have told them to tell us, but they cannot solve the situation. We are the ones who have to hold them accountable, which we are not. So here, Andrew Bonas, because he's capitalizing on the ignorance of Jamaicans, can tell us about climate change and what climate change is doing and it's not doing. But he's not saying to us the fact that we have been ravaged and some of these um, you know, international agencies also, these multinational organizations, multilateral organizations, organizations, I should say, want to um, fleece funds from us. They're not giving us funds, right? These elites are not, these oligarchs, elite oligarchs are not giving us funds, right? They're actually taking funds from us. And these guys are about making money. They're not about giving. They're about making money, even through their charitable organizations. That is what they're doing, right? They have to be making money. So when you think that they're charitable, you've got to really, really look deeper than what they say they have done or what they are doing. All right. But that is what the prime minister is saying. Nothing of substance. He's just, you know, pandering to the base. Now, let's look at the next um, speech by the opposition leader, Mark Irving. My fellow Jamaicans, on August 6, 1962, Jamaica made a bold step. As the Union Jack was lowered and replaced by the black, green, and gold, we entered a new chapter in history with the dawn of our new nation. However, you know, Mark Golding, you know, I'm not suggesting here that, you know, we have to always look formal and dapper and all of that stuff, but couldn't Mark Golding, who is wealthy, Extremely wealthy, right? Couldn't he have put on a, let me share my screen again, you know, something that is decent, right? To address the Jamaican people, right? You are the oppositional leader, Mark Gordon. Put on a tie and a shirt, you know, and look decent, right? You just look like you're just there and you are not really representing the task of the, the office, right? Because it's an office that you have you hold, you are the oppositional leader and you should dress thusly, right? And represent the people looking, you know, uh, a little bit more formal. Should I say? Yeah. But it did not start in 1962. The seeds of our independence were sown much earlier in the 1900s when 
workers began organizing themselves to advocate for better pay and working conditions. Out of that labor movement came the emergence of political parties and leaders to lead us forward from our colonial past. In 1932, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey advocated for self-governance and what he called the new Jamaica, expressing ideas about a Jamaican identity that transcended the shackles of colonialism. One which they rejected, right? So they like to include Marcus Garvey in their speeches. But what is not said is that, you know, people like the likes of Norman Manley and Buster Mantis, right? They actually rejected, uh, what's his name? Marcus Mosiah Garvey, right? And in fact, Norman Manley, Michael Manley's father, did everything as a lawyer to, you know, to sort of destroy, as it were, the character and the integrity of Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Right? This is not told, this is not said. He worked laboriously to have him implicated in acts of corruptions and charges of, you know, acts of um, impropriety in which the man was not engaged. But this is the Jamaica that we're talking about. And now they're talking about him with such great pride as if they respected him. But, you know, I can't blame Mark Golding because he's only, you know, talking about the history. But they're not doing much differently. If Marcus Garvey were supposed, if he were to come back, right, if he were to be resurrected, they would still behave the same way because they are going, all of what Jamaica is pursuing is not, you know, a path. We're not moving on a path towards becoming independence. We're more moving in the direction of slavery, right? That is the direction in which we are moving. But they're not saying that. They have to tell you what you want to hear. The labor uprising of 1938 provided the impetus for fundamental change with the right excellent Alexander Bustamante and the right excellent Norman Washington Manley emerging as the workers' champions. N.W. Manley spearheaded the struggle for universal adult suffrage, meaning the right to vote for a government of the people's choice. He negotiated for Jamaica's political independence, and he led the development of our independence constitution, all culminating in Jamaica taking up the mantle of full statehood on August 6, 1962. National identity and assert the confidence to shape our own destiny. Time come to sever ties with the British monarchy and become a fully sovereign nation once and for all, with the executive and judicial branches of our state. Again, we're talking about our history, right? And our current situation as if Britain is still the empire of the world. Right. Notice that we've never spoken about the American empire. Right? That seems not to be in existence. It's, it's, it's a figment to offer the imagination for many Jamaicans, for many Jamaican, even intellectuals. But I should not really blame us because even in the United States, its citizens are not aware that the country in which they live is an empire, is, an, is a de facto empire. And they are not aware of that. They think that they're living in democracy and their voices count, right? And the will of the people is acknowledged and respected when we know that that is not true, right? But for those of us who are reading and for those of us who understand what we read, right, and who are living in reality and who decide not to be tethered to this delusional mentality, we understand that the American empire does exist and it's wielding its power as no other empire in the history of the world has ever wielded its power because it has racked up this gigantic military apparatus with massive intelligence agencies to control behaviors and to depose as it were governments foreign governments including government in the united states Right, including government in the United States. Yesterday, I was listening to Redacted by um, Clayton Morris, and he was giving a story in which, 
You know, I need to check that. Whether, you know, if Trump wins the election, there is uh, somebody in the Democratic Party is suggesting that the House, the House of Representatives there in the United States, which probably would be controlled by Democrats, I don't know, that they should ensure that he doesn't gain the presidency. He doesn't go to the White House. And if that happens, that is going to definitely, you know, it's going to spark a civil civil war in the United States. But it's interesting to note that, you know, when Trump lost the election and he didn't accept it and he wanted his people to revolt, that, you know, there was a coup and there was a coup or it was, you know, a, a, an insurrection, right? But if the Democrats do it, it's not an insurrection, as it were. But I just mentioned that to show you that we're not living in democracies. We're not living republics as we think we are, right? The United States is a grand empire. And the United States as, a, as an empire controls Jamaica. Great Britain no longer controls Jamaica. So Jamaica extricating itself from Great Britain and replacing the king, King Charles III, with a, a local indigenous president is not going to do anything for us. It's just a symbolic gesture. Right. That is just a symbolic gesture. It has nothing to do with anything and it will not change the economic or the political realities that afflict modern Jamaica. Right. What we have to do is to extricate ourselves from the neoliberal arms of the U.S. military industrial complex, which we cannot do at this juncture of the history because we have already folded our wings and we have allowed the U.S. to have run roughshod over us and our economy, and our economy is in tatters, is in shambles, right? So I do not know what he is talking about, you know, just going and having, replacing King Charles, right, with some corrupt Jamaican president is not going to really solve our problems overnight. It's not going to solve our problems at all, right? So, <laughs> Mr. Wheel and come again, right? Opposition leader, wield and come again. Because for those of us who are thinking people, we are not going to accept that. We know that that is a lot of nonsense, right? Just a lot of nonsense, right? We need action, not a bag of mouth. And that is what our politicians need to understand. All right, so let's go back to his speech, right? That is Mark Golden. Mark Golding Street, the leader of the opposition in Jamaica. Being institutions of our own creation, in keeping with our vision of the future as a proud and independent people. Mm -hmm. Last month, our nation was rocked by the awesome power of Hurricane Burial. Many parts of Jamaica were severely affected. Communities have been disrupted. People have lost their homes. Schools and vital infrastructure were damaged, and sadly, some people lost their lives. Our spirit was challenged, and our resilience has been severely tested. Yet, in the face of this adversity, we have stood together, as the entire nation rose up in aid of our brothers and sisters who were affected by this calamity. Climate change is an emerging reality. Right, so we have the climate change agenda, and that theme is dominant in both speeches, both the Prime Minister's speech and also the leader of the opposition, Mark Golding's speech. The climate agenda is really, really dominant. We're not talking about education. We're not talking about healthcare. We're not talking about housing. We're not talking about garbage collection. We're not talking about improving the conditions of our deplorable roads. We're not talking about crime and violence, right? And the long list of intractable problems that afflict modern Jamaica. What is at the forefront right now? Because that is the agenda of their financial masters, is the whole notion of climate change. And we know that if all the other problems that I've just itemated, right, are not dealt with, if they're not solved, then what's going to happen? Right? What's going to happen? What is going to happen if these problems are not solved? Then climate change is going to definitely ravage us. 
right? Climate change is definitely going to be a problem for us. But we like to move ahead rather than dealing with what is right before our eyes. Right? Jamaica is known for that. We have not yet even developed our agricultural capacities, but we are all already at this technological industrial level. We move, you know, at far ahead of our steps. And then we begin to say, yes, we are advanced and we're modern when we have not even built up or our cultural capacities. We have not yet been, we have not, we're not yet even industrialized. We have not become an industrial society. We have not had our industrial revolution <laughs> in 2024, but we're talking about climate change, right? So how are we going to mitigate against climate change if we do not build an industrial capacity, an industrial base, and to lift the majority of our people out of poverty, right? And this is not ordinary poverty. This is abject poverty that we're talking about. Right? Abject poverty. But they're not talking about that. That's not important to them. What is important to them is the importance of articulating what their financial elites and the oligarchs have told them to do or have told them to articulate to you. And you say, yes, is Prime Minister that. Right? I'm a Prime Minister that. I mean, love him. I mean, go and vote for him. Right? Because you have nothing in your brain. ...that we cannot ignore. Hurricane Beryl has shown us that we must prioritize building more resilient and sustainable infrastructure, homes, institutions, and communities. We must take proactive steps and make sure that the required investments are in place for a sustainable future for generations of Jamaicans. Too. Right. So he moved from building, you know, infrastructure to investments, right, to make sure that the investments come to Jamaica. But the investments from where? Right. Who, who are going to who are the persons who are going to do these investments and what returns do they want on their investments? Right. Are they willing to really build Jamaica or they're more willing to earn as much money, right? To garner obscene profits than building the infrastructure and the capacity of the Jamaican people, right? That's not what he's not addressing those things. He's just talking about foreign direct investment. And yes, we can have foreign direct investments, but the money, the large majority of the money, let's say that, let's be clear on that, Right, does not remain in Jamaica. It is uh, repatriated. It's sent abroad. Right, because Jamaica is not the economy in which people want to invest in. Right, that crime-ridden, poverty-stricken country is not a country that most investors in the world desire to invest in. And I've told you before that even during slavery. We were not considered to be a secular nation, right? As Barbados was and other countries, right? We were more of a nation in which people went and make their money and then they send their money abroad, right? So we are still being used and abused and spat out. And then we create culture for them and they dance to our reggae music and they laugh at us because they say that these people are a bunch of fools, right? These people are a bunch of fools. They sell us everything that they have, right? And then they just like to be on the Olympic stage, right? And then they like to showcase their music and their cuisine, right? But that's all what they're about. They're not serious people. And we can't take these people seriously. And when you listen, look at the prime minister and the leader of opposition, lead and the leader of the opposition, who would really, in their right mind, take these gentlemen seriously because they're saying nothing and they're not imbibing any sort of hope in the Jamaican people. None whatsoever. Okay? Come. 
we have an opportunity now to build back better. Mm -hmm. Not just restoring what was lost in the hurricane, but creating communities that are stronger. Yeah, the build back better. I'm sorry that I have to be, you know, um, the build back better. Oh, I, I'm not sharing my screen. I'm, wow, I think I did not share my screen here. But the build back better. I'm sure you heard him, right? They have to talk about the build back better, right? And the fact is that what are they building back better, right? And those are, that's a mantra coming from the World Economic Forum, right? And these guys won't tell you that, that that's where it's coming from, right? The World Economic Forum and their agenda for building back better, building a bit better world. And every time what we're seeing are wars, social decadence and poverty right but you know you decide a more resilient and more sustainable this will require collaboration across all sectors mm -hmm. of society government the private sector and civil institutions mm -hmm. and of course support from the international community absolutely together we can transform this natural disaster mm -hmm. into a catalyst for positive change mm -hmm. and a better future. Right. Our strength lies in our unity mm -hmm. and our ability to overcome hardships only makes us stronger. Let us continue to support each other in rebuilding and restoring our beautiful island home. Jamaica's right. legacy is so rich with extraordinary accomplishments. Right. Extraordinary accomplishments, right? By individual Jamaicans, thank God. That, that is what we have done, individual Jamaicans. But extraordinary accomplishment, not by what our politicians have done, right? We have not done well on the global stage in regards to our economy, right? And our healthcare, our education, we are behind, right? So what is this great accomplishment that we have made? <laughs> and we have not even you know, gained the numbers of medals. Yesterday I was reading the Olympic, you know, medals, the meddling system, the table, right? And we are way down there, maybe in the 40s, right? Uh, among the world, the nations of the world. So that what we were thinking of using to show that we're little bit with Talawa, <laughs> even that is crumbling before our eyes, <laughs> right? You're not meddling in the Olympic games as you normally meddled so because we depend on these very you know um sandy foundations right we build on the sand and then when the sand crumbles before our eyes we just are just there we 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 freeze up right we don't know what to do and we begin to hustle to see how we will you know move our people forward but we have to build our economy we have to build a shore foundation. We have to build on the rock and not on the sea, as our prime ministers are doing. You know, at the same time, we're telling people not to build on these, you know, these on the shore of the sea, right? But that's what they're doing when they're building our economy and our politics, right? They're not building on the solid, rocky foundation um, of you know, independence and building a safe and secure economy for all our people. So I just wanted to give you my thoughts on listening to these people, to your politicians, and to let you know that these people are not saying anything, right? They're just speeches to in doing their jobs, right? They're just doing their jobs. And one of their jobs descriptions is that they give you or they make a speech for independence <laughs> and they have done it right and um, it's for you now to decide whether their speech or their speeches were substantive and they really made you know points that will help to push us forward thank you so much for joining i hope that you like and you'll share and you subscribe and that you will continue to support this channel. Remember now that you do not have to pay to subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button. It's not something that you have to pay for. It's very simple. Just use your finger and push the subscription button, right? It will take nothing from you or you will not have to pay a red cent to do that. So please, those of you who have not yet subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. All the best to you. See you then. Ciao.